now. I'm trying to watch my oh, weight. It's better 50p for a sandwich, eh? Hey, hey. No, certainly not. Go back, quick, for a cup of tea. Oh, go away. I'll have a bite you're at it. <laughs> What's red all over? I've got only one leg and a flat beak. Sounds very rare. Where did you see it? Just outside, just bounced off a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mind if I... Sit down? No. Oh, can I buy you a... Drink? Yes. Gin and... Orange. Fine. OK. Hello, uh, gin and orange and... Uh, Quite a face. Yes. Turned out... Nice again, isn't it? Yes. That'll be... Uh, £1.32. No, I haven't got anything small. Thanks very much. <laughs> Would you, uh... Yes, I'd love to have dinner with you. Do you? Yes, I come to the... Mind Reader's Convention. Every... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I was walking here the other night, you had... That's Guinness. <laughs> you had five pints of Guinness and ten packets of those KP nuts. Went home and pebbled ash three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Candy from the escort agency. Do you want five minutes or ten minutes? Or do you want complete relief? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like complete relief, please. <laughs> complete relief as then tiger. <sighs> oh, <that's laughs> <hard. laughs> <laughs> What's that you drinking? Well, it's a uh, large whiskey and uh, ginger ale. Yeah. I tell you what, I bet you ten p I can drink it down in one without even touching the glass. Without touching it at all? Yeah. Go on, you're on. Ten p. Ten p. Go on. Right. <sighs> well, you touched the glass. That was pathetic. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> Cable television. Do we want it? Here to discuss with me the latest technological revolution is Mr. Geoffrey Stevens, program planner. Uh, Mr. Stevens, does the British public really want cable television? Oh, well, that's, of course, the $64 million question. I mean, I think the answer is yes. Um, I'll tell you why. It's simply that the sheer variety of entertainment available through cable TV is so stunning. I mean, uh, feature films, for example, there will be an entire channel devoted entirely to feature films or, or sport. Sport uh, can be beamed worldwide from any channel in the world and fed through the cable system. Um, uh, current affairs can be solely represented by one single cable TV channel. But I think uh, the most important thing I want to stress is that via cable TV there will be a tremendous number of tits. Gosh, yes. I mean, there will be <laughs> boobs galore. There will be boobs the size of bloody pumpkins. Can you imagine? Mr. Stevens, I mean, I'm sorry, enormous I bloody whammers. Whammers beamed worldwide. Enormous great jubblies flopping I, about Mr. all over Stevens, the place. Mammary glands going I, everywhere. I, oh, great sorry, tits swinging from side to side. Ah, oh, marvellous publicist. Every night, night after night, the landlord pushes the boat out. It's the only way you can get across the floor of the gents. Will you please welcome Germany's leading country and western singer, Hank von Schwanhun. Schwanhun. Hank von Schwanhun. Ein und zwei und vier und einer Charlie Rich. Splish and splash and knock and not cracker. Don Williams, Gestapo playing honky tonk. Schithausen, Vater mit mein Panzerdarm. Schmidt, Dodo ohne Blitz, an Mix, an Country Boy again. 
Johnny Kasia, Christel Gehlein, Blackie Tonser, Granzlin, Wittmann, Deutschland, Kuba, Alice, we have made to make you sing Faden, Faden, Dolly Faden, Gross and Dick, ja, Mut! Glenn Campbell, Kenny Rogers und Franz Beckenbauer. John Denver, Poppy, Gentry, Mesche, Schmidt. Kleiner, kleiner, grand old Opry, play the mouth. Thank Quentin, I'm hating every inch of you. Help, fool, don't know the tricks and the mix and can't drink all again. Mine comes, yeah, Johnny Cash and Chris Duggan. And I'm trying to get on the grass. Flipping my toys and over eyes. Fear, first to my girl, thank God and God. Don't let God, don't let that. BGT doing 40 mph down a B3125 to Wallstone City, right? When I get an eyeball with a rubber lady in a BMW, well, it's the big 10 for it. So we hit the CB to the VHFI numbers and do a bit of rapping about ACDC QCs are in a PVC, you know what I mean? And she's coming on back with some story about uh, smoke in a bill from MI5 containing the FBI, the CIA, and the USVIP. Turns out, right, they've all been following a UFO since 10 a.m. GMT. Well, my IQ's going AWOL. So, I calls up this local DJ. He sends out an SOS to the BBC, the ITV, and my local MP. Now, they offer me an IOU for info on the UFO, but I say no HP, it's COD, OK? Right. So, I give my ETA and RF base halfway off the M1, just up the UK, and everyone turns up there, including the AA, the CND, and the bloody KKK. Right. So, I'm going PDQ for the landing field when I crash the MG and a JCB. Ah, oh, unfortunately, the owner's got a BA in GBH, so I said, TDFN, and does a runner. Then I'll get picked up by a bleeding WPC with an APB. She mistakes my ID for some junkie on LSD and gives it a bum rush to HQ. Now, I get interviewed by a CO with BO, who gives me the big Evo, and I end up down the YMCA with a bar of CDM and a cold cup of PG. Just about get 40 Zs before this morning's 9am RV with the JP, which to my mind is all a bit... Yeah. OTT. What's that stand for? <laughs> <laughs> I blocked him and he lit up with a great day and it was up here. Seven foot high. <laughs> Lando said, get out of here. If it does happen here, we'll never get out of the place. So he tied the lamppost outside, the block came in, he said, uh, oh, was that dog outside? It's dead. I said, dead? He said, what's killed it? He said, my church, church, uh, my church, uh, chihuahua. He said, how did that He said, it got stuck in its throat. Director inquiries, which town, please? Kings Lynn. Kings Lynn, hold on. I've oh, got a Kings Lynn. Oh, Christ, that's tricky. <clears throat> Name, please, caller. Harris. Harris, thank you. It's Harris. Wait a minute, Sue's been to Kings Lynn. Sue? Yes. We've got a Kings Lynn. Try me. Harris. Harris. And pick the pages. Mm. Uh, first name, please? Sally. Sally, thank you. It's Sally. Sally Harris. Oh, I know Sally Harrison. That's uh, Kings Lynn 2754. No, it's Harris. Damn. Damn. Address, please. I know a Sally Harris. That's Trevor Johnson's cousin. I'll phone Trevor. The stall Well, how can I have asked him all the usual questions? You know, first name, second name, address. Well, ask some unusual questions. Like what? Well, just do it. 
<clears throat> what colour eyes do you have, Caller? <laughs> what colour eyes do you have? Uh, brown. That's funny, they sounded green. <laughs> Hold on. That was marvellous. Have you got Trevor's number? I don't know. Phone director inquiries for me. Uh, well, what's the number? Uh, 192. Director of Wales, which town, please? Kings Lynn. Kings Lynn, hold on. Got another Kings Lynn. Uh, name, please? Uh, Johnson, Trevor. Oh. I've got it. Hello, Trevor. How are you? How's that cousin of yours? Well, oh, move on. on. On holiday in Portugal. Yes, I found it, caller. Thanks, Trevor. Bye. The number's Kings Lynn 9003. The number's Kings Lynn 9003. But she's on holiday in Lisbon, the Alphamar Hotel. Uh, but she's on holiday in Lisbon, Alphamar Hotel. Oh, oh, I was there last year. What's the number? Oh, hang on. Oh, thanks, little No, not at all. No, hang on a sec. Um, it's Lisbon 87648. The number is Lisbon 87648. Thanks very much. What a terrific service. <laughs> for Indian restaurant waiters That's what Randy Ram is fighting for <laughs> He's got a small bomb factory down in Southall <laughs> And from there he directs his one-man war Randy Ram, the Indian man, has formed a one-man army Rumour has it around the town that Randy Ram is balmy. <laughs> of Randy Ram, the Indian man, beware, cos he's a killer. He plants exploding jipatis, cos he's a turban gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, Randy stood for Parliament. <laughs> but he only got one vote, tra-la-la. And that was from a mad rapist from Luton. <laughs> Now he's in the nut house, so Ranji's given up the ghost. But in the meantime, Ranji also makes booby trap lentil soup. <laughs> Designed to go off just as you dip your bread. And also exploding onion barges. Full of two-year-old pompadoms that shatter and stick in the <laughs> tin there. The Indian man has formed a one man army. Rumour has it around the town that Randy Ram is balmy. Of Randy Ram, the Indian man, beware, cos he's a killer. He plants exploding jipatis, cos he's a turban gorilla. <laughs> Wake my beloved, and speak the words I long to hear. Let me hear at last your golden voice. Let it caress my eager ears. <laughs> Awake from your eternal sleep, and speak, my love. Speak! Come on, I'm dying for a wee! <laughs> the cells, isn't it? We were at Eden together. Oh? Frobisher House, was it? No, Catherson's. 5761. 5963. Homosexual? No. Oh, Jeremy Sanshaw. <laughs> I said to the gaffery behind the bar, I said, do you want to make a contribution to the decline in the world population? He said, how can I help? I said, get that machine in the bog fixed. <laughs> Yeah. That's my girl you're groping. So what? Do you want to make something of it? No, just be careful you don't catch what I did. <laughs> <laughs> this fellow went to the doctor and said, I've got this terrible pain across my forehead. The doctor said, uh, he said, it's driving me mad. The doctor said, let's examine him. got this death of thing he said, up and down his chest. He said, nothing. He said, well, you take your trousers off, we'll, we'll have a stop take. So he took his... <laughs> <laughs> so he took his trousers, he's standing there, and the doctor took one look at his... his... Lunchbox. He said, he said, I can't, he said, you can't leave. Well, he said, that's it. He said, that's why you've got a pain across your forehead. He said, as long as you've got, he said, you'll have a pain. He said, you'll have to have it. Scissors, you'll have to go, you know. Well, he said, and the till went. And then, <laughs> I think you're training me to be a police horse, aren't you? <laughs> he, uh, so he went home and the pain's still there. He thought, I'll have to get rid of this. So anyway, he went privately, he had it off, left him without a sausage. He paid and... And... <laughs> when he... Uh, laugh, I nearly passed me five grand. Listen, and... 
But he'd gone up after the operation, the pain had gone, it, it finished. He thought, by Joe, I'm through to the finals. He thought, I'll, get myself, I'll buy myself a suit. He'd never felt as well for months, so he went down Harley Street in London, they moved all the tailors, and he went in this shop. And this fellow come out, he said, I want the best suit you've got in the house. He said, showed him these materials, he said, they, I said, I'll have that one. He's right, he said, I'll measure you, sir. He said, measure me now, because I'd like it to fit. So he's standing there, and he's got the tape measured in the tailor. He did the elbow to shoulder and the thing, and extended the thing, and then he did back to the thing, like, and then the <laughs> waist and the hips, and then he did outside leg, that was 39. He came to the inside leg, and he just starts to me. He said, uh, which side do you dress, sir? Because you know you have to decide uh, whether you're going to... And, when it's, and, uh, and this fellow said, well, is it important which side I dress? And the tailor said, well, it is really, because he said, if you dress the wrong side, you get a terrible pain across your forehead. <laughs> From Italy, you recognize him, you won't be stuck, comes out of his box with his What's that with you, mate? Oh, him? Well, he's just come back from a wife swapping party with Sheikh Ali Khalifa. 392. 393. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going bold! I'm going bold! Look at it! Look! Look at it! Why me? Why me? I got up this morning, right? And I washed it! And when I pulled the plug out of the sink, the water steered where it was! And when I looked, there's one like a Brillo pad blocking up the plug hole. I picked it out! You know what it was? Hair! My bleeding hair! My wife hates me! My wife hates me! You know, should get it for my tea! You know, should get it for my tea! Boil them! I'm bleeding it! Boil them! She knows I ate it too, that's why she gave it me, just to get me wound up. It didn't work. It didn't work. I looked at it. I looked at her, I sat down and I ate it every bit. Then I stood up, I smiled at her, and I clowned her round the cup. I said, don't get me bleeding, boil them. I don't smoke. I don't smoke. I do not smoke. I've done on a cigarette for three weeks. Three days! Oh, I had one! One this morning! One! And I didn't enjoy it! Who was it who rang me up last night? Who was it who rang me up last night? I'm there, right, in the bath. Every time I'm in the bleeding bath, the phone rings! I'm there, right? Stuck there, dripping wet! Going bold! Dying for a cigarette! A voice says, is that you, Doreen? <laughs> I said, do it sound like bleeding, Doreen? <laughs> and then they say, what number is that? <laughs> what number? <laughs> you ring a total stranger up when he's in the middle of shampoo and his wedding tackle <laughs> just to ask him what his bleeding floor number is. <laughs> what else come back? <laughs> Hey, Kev, did you get that job you went for as a BBC news reader? No, no, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you think it was discrimination? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's j j j just because I'm b b b barmy. <laughs> Hello, mind if I join you? Uh, no. Thank you. How are you today, then? I'm not very well, actually. Oh, you don't look very well, actually, no. I know. Mm. Funny that. I knew a chap once, didn't look very well, just like you. He died. Did he? Mm, yes, snapped it. Heart stopped still. Might not happen to you, eh? I hope not. You married, then? Yes. Oh, dangerous business, wives. I knew a chap once, had a wife. Died. Just put the ring on her finger, he did. Flopped over like a rag doll. Wife fell onto her mother. 
Mother fell onto the front pew. All congregation down like a park. A domino still. Might not happen to you, that's life. <laughs> Did their doctors mention anything to you about dying? No. Don't console yourself with that. One chap I knew went to the doctor with a bad back. Doctors didn't even mention death. Next day, walking along, not a care in the world, or so he thought, falls off a cliff. Dead. Absolutely dead. So dead they buried him. Died himself with death, he did. Killed himself to death. Stunned. Look at this. Thank you very much. Want a bit of How much? Uh, 133, please. Oh, I want for yourself. Thank oh, you. thanks very much indeed. I'll have my usual. Yes. Cheers, have yourself. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> 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 right, that's uh, uh it's another twenty three pounds forty eight feet. <laughs> There's not if all this I mean all this I'm Rosier. There's no microphones in the old days, you know. No Mike. Al Jolson if you was to microphone. You see this here? Can you bring it down? Let the people see this. You see this microphone here? Testing, one, two. Never work. Al Jolson never used a microphone. He went to the stage and the sang away and the audience shouted, Al! You can't hear, get a microphone. <laughs> Oh. Hey, look at these. A curry chicken flavour. I've got prawn cocktail and smoked right. salmon. Mm. I've got barbecue and black bean sauce flavoured crisps. Hey, That's... look at this chilli con carne. Yummy. Look at these. Look. Plain potato flavour. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to tell you about the new weirdo video library. Home entertainment for all the family. Action-packed films like The Brentford Brain Eater. Recall in horrors you witness realistic scenes of escaped maniac plucking out young newlyweds' eyes then poking teaspoons through empty sockets to gouge out innocent victims' brains. And exciting adventure stories like The Mincer Massacre. Throw up with revulsion as you witness scantily clad nurses being lured into psychopaths disused kitchen where he forces their hands into a liquidizer. Try as they might to fight him off with their stumps, the blood spurting in fountains, the maniac mass murderer manages to hack them into lumps small enough to be minced. He'll never eat beef burgers again. <laughs> but for those who like their entertainment a little meatier, there's... I was in love with a nymphomaniac pig, Black Emmanuel at Longleat, and men who spank tortoises. And lastly, but by no means leastly, we have just managed to get hold of a film featuring explicit scenes of a depraved nanny who perverts young children with her own warped fetish for men covered in soot. Good night and stay with you. Dum 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 da, dum 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 da. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. Oh, where are you supposed to be? I'm Jack. Sorry. We just sold a cow at the market, you know. We'd get some magic beans. Just sold a cow at the market and got some magic beans. Yeah. Right. I'm going to plant them in the garden and overnight a huge beanstalk going to grow right up to the sky. I'm going to climb up it to the giant's castle above the clouds. Steal the goose that lays the golden eggs. And we'll all make lots of bread. And live happily ever after. Kevin, are you on drugs? <laughs> No mistake, but baby, if you insist, I'll cut out cake just for your sake. Baby, come on and knock me a kiss. I like pie 
and hope to die. But just get a load of this when you get high. Forget the pie, baby. Come on and knock me a kiss. When you pressed your lips to mine, then I understood. It tastes like candy, brandy and white. Peaches, bananas, and everything good. Come on and knock me a kiss. Baby, knock me a kiss and show me some of them blue skies smiling at me. Nothing but blue sky Do I see Get a load of those blue birds Singing a song It'll be nothing but blue skies From now on I never saw the sun Never saw things going so right Noticing the days hurrying by When you're in love, my, how they fly Those blue, blue days, all of them are gone Nothing but blue skies, blue skies from now on to mine then I understood they taste like candy brandy and wine peaches and bananas and everything good now I love jam and no flim flam scratch it off of my list this ain't no jam no jam no scram Knock me a kiss, juicy. Have you heard this band? How about Mad Mad Man and Bon Hall? Victor Sylvester and all off, lost, all here. <laughs> Have you heard this here? I've got 15 saxophones. <laughs> They're over saxed. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tim. Mind if I listen to the cricket? No, of course not. <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Gloria Rogers, and I am your new philosophy lecturer for this term. Or am I? <laughs> that is the question. Or is it? The answer to both these questions is yes. But how can you be sure? How can I be sure? Do I care? Do you care? Does God care? Does he exist? Is he dead? Is he alive? Is he alive but slightly off colour? Or is he alive with just a little bit of a tummy bug? The best 
indication of God's whereabouts can be found in Bertrand Russell's book entitled The Best Indication of God's Whereabouts by Bertrand Russell. <laughs> For if you take the first and the fourth word of pages 3, 7, 14, 18, 28, 45, 123, 334 and 587, it spells out God is a transvestite octogenarian nun working in a Siberian salt mine as a pickaxe. <laughs> Startling Discovery has been applied by Joseph Jefferson of the Department of Startling Discoveries, University of Florida, who has revealed that through using Russell's random page technique that the first letters of the chapters of the Bible spell out, Jesus was a black woman. And he goes on to describe the transition from life to death. Life, he said, sounds like wife. Wife sounds like strife. Strife evokes strobe. Strobe evokes lobe. Lobe evokes ear. Ear evokes dear. Dear misspelled is Dean. I switch the M to D and you get dead. Dead is death. Therefore life is death. And death is therefore life. I am a mini metro. My husband is a vacuum cleaner. My sons are my cabbages. My cabbages are my dogs. And therefore, ipso facto, you are all. Thank you. <laughs> Useless bloody police force. Still haven't found that mad bloody arsonist. Complete waste of bloody taxpayers' money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, coming onto the floor now, the latest Russian discovery, toast of gymnasts around the world, five-year-old Nadia Naposhka, the elfin-like prodigy from the Soviet Institute for Semi-Expandable Plastics. And uh, what a waif-like figure she cuts. Two aspirins on an ironing board as she deftly goes through the now standard uh, Soviet pre-routine ritual of roughly inserting a three-foot-long canister of methylpropane gas up her bottom uh, to improve performance. I think she's bound to win the hearts of the crowd with her stunning new routine in which she deliberately snaps her spine in half on the beam uh, to get those vital extra points yes whack there goes the spine now vertebra and marrow everywhere uh, and what a blistering finish to a remarkable routine as a as a as a as a jagged but rather cubist Nadia is uh, pitchforked into the Russian skip in the car park and I think the crowd particularly like that cheeky little touch at the end as her tibia poked ever so chirpily through her cheekbone uh, yes that's marvelous she scores predictably 12.6 out of 10 um, it doesn't appear to be good enough for the Soviet coach though who is now showing professional displeasure by strapping the entire judges panel to a SAM-22 missile <laughs> but um, after all discipline is what the Russian uh, gymnastics is all about summarized so aptly in the motto of the uh, Russian Gymnastic Federation if you can't beat them we'll stop your bread allowance <laughs> and so from me at the world championship gymnastics display it's good night <laughs> Yeah, can I have a wall banger, please? Sorry, sir, it's against the law unless you do it in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> Good morning, Doctor. Hello, uh, what seems to be the trouble? I've got this rather nasty boil on my elbow. OK, well, just drop your trousers and we'll have a look at it, OK? Uh, but, but, Doctor, it's oh, actually no, on my... Come on, don't be embarrassed. Everyone's got an elbow, you know. If we didn't have elbows, we'd have nothing to sit on. So, come on, just come round the front oh, and drop well, it. All right. Okay. But hang on, what's that? Would you... Did you know they're spreading? You've got a nasty boil on your on your navel as well. But, but that's the one I was telling you about. Yes, I know. Uh, would you sit down? Are you feeling generally a bit off colour? You look rather run down. Well, I've had this sore throat. Sore throat. OK, well, just open and say, ah, uh, would you? Uh... Oh, good Lord, yes. Look at that. Your scrotum's very inflamed. <laughs> my scrotum? Yes. But I no, thought my scrotum was... What's that? What a nasty scar you've got there. Was that a hernia operation or what? No! I cut myself shaving! Ah, uh, no, you must be careful about shaving under there. That's terribly important because that's where your Achilles tendon is. And your Achilles tendon carries blood all the way around your body, right the way from your womb, all the way around and back to your rectum. Do you see? Womb? Rectum? Yes. Scrotum? Bollocks! You're a quack! Good morning! Morning. Oh, Doctor, you certainly know how to get rid of those boring NHS patients. Yes, well, it's the only way, isn't it? Now, how about you and me making love on this table until early afternoon, hmm? Mm, okay. Right. Let, let's go. Oh, 
Because I've got a st 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 stutter. The only time I talk to girls is when I'm feeling cuttered. Can't go to parties, my life's a misery. Cause I get nervous and I forget my whoa 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 Whoa, 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 whoa